Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, once again, I welcome you all. We are so excited to have you here today. Uh, this is Aastha. I work in marketing team at Profit.co. As you can see, uh, I have joined with Netaji Kartik and we are thrilled to introduce him, our esteemed keynote speaker for our webinar on OKR planning for 2024. Netaji brings two decades of expertise and experience to the table, extending beyond OKR. Currently serving as the consulting practices head at Profit.co, Netaji has carved out a distinguished career path. His journey includes pivotal roles such as Associate General Manager at HCL Technologies and Associate Consultant at TCS. With a diverse portfolio he has, actively engaged roles like business process leads and product manager, collaborating closely with clients across various industries. His specialization extends to crafting go-to-market strategies, adapt data analysis, developing robust sales and marketing strategies, and executing successful business plans in collaboration with partners. Who better than Netaji Karthik to help us strategize for a prosperous 2024? So with no more further ado, I'm gonna pass this over to Netaji. Netaji, the virtual floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks for the great introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. So thanks for your time uh, for taking up to join this webinar. I hope like we'll be able to make this make your time really counted in terms of getting you to know about like how we're going to plan plan out your 2024 annual operating plan or business strategy plan whatsoever, but with the help of OKRs, right? So precisely we're going to talk about that. But before we get there, I uh, would like to bring in a, a quick uh, initial survey or a pulse survey or a poll to talk about like I mean, or to understand the pulse of the uh, participants out here. Uh, so yeah, there you go. You might be seeing a, a poll on the screen. Uh, let me allow like 30 seconds uh, uh, for people to bring in, to talk about or to, to cover in terms of like the reason why are they here. There are four options we've been talking about. Uh, firstly, like probably you're new to OKRs, uh, you might be curious to know what it is, or uh, it could be someone who has been practicing OKRs already, but uh, literally like uh, just like any other hiccups with any new implementations, you might be having certain problems and uh, you really want to know how to do that. And third part, it's predominantly from a C-level leadership perspective, you do the strategies, but the most important use case of going ahead with OKRs. All right. Wonderful, all right, thank you so much. So why do we do that, right? I mean, again, like I'm going to answer a lot of whys today. So any, any topic, any change, any transformation that we talk about, not just OKRs, be it anything with respect to people, process, technology, at most important thing is to understand why does it matter to us, right? The same thing goes for this topic as well, right? And forget about OKRs, talk about strategy planning, forget about annual planning, anything that we talk about should have to start with like, why are we supposed to do that, right? And that's precisely, I'm gonna have my very first talking point to understand like the importance of OKRs in the annual planning. So precisely helping us to understand the niche case or the, the, the problem statement that we're trying to solve by means of bringing in OKRs as part of the annual planning. And then we'll talk about how are we, so knowing, okay, yeah, this is going to solve the problem for me. Then we go into a little bit of detail about like how it is going to solve that problem for me. A precise sub, a detailed statement of like how that is being actually orchestrated by well-known organizations that use OKRs. And courtesy that we have been coming up, banking up with the Tons of, and I would say like hundreds and hundreds of practical such OKR implementations across enterprises and SMBs. I'm just going to get a, a gist of how this has been literally planned out, carved out by the top running successful companies. Right. And third on the aspect, like, okay, let's take a, a quick faster route. What is that we can do in order to realize those values and benefits much quicker? Right. And then we'll end up with a QA. So that's all we are going to cover up for today's webinar. With that, let me jump on to the very first topic, importance of OKRs in the annual planning. Right, so as I said, everything starts with the why. And 
the moment when somebody talk about annual planning, strategy planning, annual operating plan, budgeting plan, whatsoever plan that you do at the organization level, PU level, department level, I would say that it has to focus on two aspects. There is plan of outcome and there is a plan of action. And literally we're gonna cover up how are these two topics is going to play a big role in terms of for us to consider the aspect of bringing in OKRs in the annual planning. So before we go further, before I talk further about like what does that mean or what does literally OKR has to do with the action or with the outcome, uh, we go with another poll shortly uh, just to take up like, okay, man, how well are we kind of experienced in terms of doing a planning man, or what kind of a methodology do we use? And, and, and when, we, when you guys do your planning, man, do you consider outcomes? Do you consider actions? And uh, mostly, like according to your opinion, and what do you, what do you, what is your preference, and uh, what do you literally need to focus on? So you should be seeing a question, uh, trying to understand, like, okay, what's the plan of outcome or what's the plan of action according to you? Uh, one, you could say that yeah, both are equally important, or both are literally kind of uh, points of consideration as part of planning, and. Uh, Somewhere people say that a plan of outcome is important. Somewhere people say that plan of action is important. And again, like there is, there is nothing right or wrong answer in that question. Uh, but literally trying to look out, how are we going to get that addressed? Right. Let's give a few more seconds until we get some responses on the polls. Wonderful. I mean, that's really looking a pretty good uh, insights that I'm seeing on the poll. So really healthy enough to see that uh, majority of the people voting on saying that, okay, both of them are going to be equally important enough, ideally helping us to achieve the end goal. Right? All right, wonderful, great. So, so we talked about like men, it's, it's a good insight, we, we, you've been able to see that, okay, both of them are going to be equally important for you guys. But uh, a quick note, just for us to start with, what is the plan of action and what is the plan of outcome? While you are absolutely right, right? But in saying that in terms of having or considering the end goal, definitely both of them are equally important. Uh, but let me bring on the priority of the focus. How do we really need to bring this as part of the overarching plan? So first things first, let's understand like what's a plan of action. Obviously, like it is something like when you talk about a kind of a, a, a baby steps that you are supposed to take on, which will help you to come up with a bunch of, of it's a task initiatives that will help you to achieve the final goal. It's more of saying that, okay, this is what I want to achieve. And then I'm talking about, okay, these are the ways or these are the initiatives that I'm going to take on that will help me to achieve that final goal. In contrast, obviously, outcome focuses as the name signifies, right? So obviously, outcome focuses on what matters the most. And OKR okay, specifies precisely says that, okay, measure what matters, right? Obviously, it tells that, let me focus on the end goals that I want to achieve on. So results matter, obviously, right? I mean, probably when I talk about the results, that could be umpteen ways I'll be able to achieve to that outcome. And then the prioritization comes into play, which talks about what will be my best way or the best plan of action to achieve that outcome, right? So that's a good, I mean, probably like a, a, a good introduction to start with the prerequisites sites to consider as part of uh, planning. But why do we need to talk about this? Let me recollect one of the uh, uh, scenarios or when I was meeting with the, uh, yeah, with, this, with the leader in the CTO office of a, of a SaaS tech company a couple of weeks back as part of their Q4 planning for 2022. So being the top level leader in the CTO office, and uh, we, were, we were looking at like a, how to craft his OKRs for his CTO organization. And then the very first insights, when he was been, so he, based on all the expertise of OKRs, so he had come up with a bunch of OKRs for him. And then one of them talked about wherein it says that, okay, he really need to conduct a couple of uh, hackathon events. Makes sense, obviously, right? So that's a city organization. Really need, need to put focus on whatsoever technology events that they need to focus on. 
Then there was another couple of key results, which uh, predominantly talked about, uh, he has been focusing on meeting with the uh, 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 leading analysts, right? People talk about Forrester, Gartner's. So he talked about those things. Really, he really need to get established uh, at least uh, six, seven meetings with those leading analysts for the quarter. And also, like he also talked about kind of publishing the uh, two, three uh, technology papers. So these were some of the uh, key results that he has written as part of his CTO organization. And precisely that's where, that's the question that I asked him, wherein saying that it's all good. And I really appreciate you've been getting onto the detail, but it really misses the question, what is that you want to achieve? Certainly as a leader in the CTO organization, these are things that you want your team to deliver for you, but what do you want to, what do you, what is your expectation in terms of delivering all these things, right? So the point to understand is that it's so common for any human brain, right? That's what we say that we really want to go ahead with the planning. It's so common for anybody, right? To jump in quickly and say that, okay, this is what I want to do on, right? Let's go ahead and do it. We quickly jump into conclusion. We quickly jump into the list of things that we have that we are supposed to do. Something like, as I talked about my inferences with my meeting with my uh, with 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 a leader in that city organization. So precisely, I picked up those sample key results. Okay, as that has been written up by the city organization, right? And then we started doing the brainstorming. And precisely, I talked about this planning approach. It may, probably like people use various ways, various methodologies to do their annual planning. While OKAS is one of the aspects to do that planning, people might be using balance scorecard, 4DX, Pershing Henry, or whatsoever, or any custom frameworks, whatsoever it has been helping them to come up with the sequence of what, the, the different strategic planning and execution activities. But I was still instigating that. Look at it based on what we see as a plan of action and outcome, whatsoever key results or OKRs that you have come up with, considering the level precisely while you being the top level leadership level, I really want to put that everything under the bucket of plan of action. And definitely at this level, we really need to focus on the outcomes. And that's where we kind of redo, kind of we did the uh, 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 reverse engineering, try to understand we try to talk about the intent. We try to talk about the impact. We try to talk about the reasoning, why he has been picking up all these things. And we try to come up with the relative set of end goals for him, which precisely aligns with the plan of outcome, right? For example, when we talked about, I need to have this tech interactions. I need to have the connects with the forester analyst. I need to talk about publishing the tech papers and all. His idea was that, I really want my organization to be credited as the top-notch technology company in the, in, the, in the tech industry. And then we talked about it, and that's precisely that should be our end goals, right? Because if this is the intent, I really it talks about multiple things, right? One, I'm talking about the brand awareness. It should talk about that will come up as means of these initiating tech interactions, technology, publishing technology papers, right? And then the purpose of doing hackathons. Ideally, organizations do hackathons for a couple of reasons, right? One, you'll be able to kind of do any cost optimization so that you outsource it so that it's a win-win situation, right? While the participants being able to exhibit their talents. And at the same time, you're also going to solve certain problem statements for you, which eventually is going to quicken up the product delivery, the end-to-end -end total turnaround time for your go-to-market, for your new product development, that's going to get reduced. And obviously, that's going to be my outcome that you'll be focusing on, for which obviously hackathon is one of them. So once you define the outcome, and then your brain can be like, can have an unconstrained thought process, which will help you with come up with not just three, you will be able to come up with 30 different initiatives, 30 different plan of actions. So ultimately, what we really need to understand is that when somebody go ahead with the planning approach, and especially Considering the levels, if you're doing this planning at the C-level, at the managerial level, definitely put so much focus on the outcomes first. Let the next level focus on the kind of initiatives or the plan of action. And if you've been able to come up with the strategic initiatives, that's well and good. 
But when I would say that at the strategic level, let the planning be so focused on the plan of outcome, right? So that's a food for thought for us, right? As we step on to the 2024 OKR planning methodology, ensure that our thought process should always have to be on outcome focused approach, right? And that's the main reason we have to talk about this just to bring out like why really we have to talk about it. But again, people might be understanding like we spend like more than five minutes on this uh, slide talking about the importance of plan of outcome. But where does OKR fit into this entire government of theory, right? Why do we really even talking about OKRs as part of plan of action, plan of outcome, as part of the annual planning unit? Well, the answer to that puzzle is that as you look at to look at if you look at these two things as a Venn diagram, right? And obviously the overlapping part. This is what it is literally going to be bridged by OKRs. While the textbook says that OKR is a means to bridge the strategy and execution, from an execution perspective, I would say that practically it's a, it's a bridge between your plan of outcome and plan of action. And this is where pretty much many organizations have the gaps because you look at a scenario, the strategic leadership team do their planning, they focus on outcomes, just like as you rightly mentioned during your very first book. Majority of you said that, okay, it's the outcome is the most important one and both of them are going to be most important. So as rightly said, right, the strategic planning or the leadership level planning, they are, the leadership team is specifically going to focus on the outcomes, right? And uh, we also know that it's going to get substantiated with the strategic initiatives or the plan of actions at a later point of time. But how do you know that both of them are connected to each other? While I'm talking about certain one thing, like I do not impact the other one, or how are my initiatives literally leading up to the achievement of the outcome? And this is where OKR holds all those things together, helping us to have an effective framework to manage my planning along with the execution. Right, so we'll talk about it with Mena. We will a couple of more examples as well, how it is going to play that out. Right, so let's understand that. Uh, like we, we all know that okay, OKR is a need to connect. We just saw that okay, it's to connect the outcomes and the actions. As I mentioned, like it can be any framework, but I would say that, like, regardless of whatsoever frameworks. Any organization is going to precisely focus on one thing, which is not going to get changed, regardless whether you follow OKR, balance work, or what's a framework, which is nothing but the KPIs, right? Even if you have to talk about KPIs and OKRs, I would say that KPIs are permanent. Obviously, right? Any business, even if it is non-profit organization, even if you are talking about the corporate level, BU level, department level, everywhere there are KPIs. KPIs must stay forever. Right? OKRs is just going to give a direction in terms of how to steer those KPIs. So regardless of your different plan of action outcome, the leadership team is going to fo so focus on their KPIs. Or in other cases, like depending upon the organization, right? if you have been representing a, a SaaS uh, 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 a tech company, right? probably like you might be having not star metrics. Right? So according to that, so we picked up an example based upon a, a SaaS tech company. So MAU, monthly average users, that's a critical one to understand my growth. ARPU, average revenue per user, that's an important KPI to measure my profitability, revenue, growth. Conversion rate, session length, these are good metrics from a product management perspective, right? Session length tells that the, the stickiness part of uh, my product, conversion rate helps me to understand the customer engagement and how effective my sales channels has been. So these are some of the core KPIs that the leadership team wants to track at any, any cost, right? So you call it as an outcome, you call it as a KPI, you call it as a North Star metric, what's what terminology that you want to use. Regardless of the framework, this is what any business, any leadership team wants to track on, right? But how I, whatsoever I mentioned in the previous slides, right? How do I know, right? If I'm sitting at the top level or if I'm sitting at the leadership level or if I'm, if I'm sitting at the a department level, how do I know that I'm making equivalent contributions that is helping me to improve my KPIs? You might be running multiple programs, projects, initiatives, whatsoever and whatnot, right? 
So you should be able to understand what are the different initiatives that are driving your KPIs, which is nothing but your outcomes, right? So let's take a, a hypothesis, right? Obviously, I'm, I'm making a, a, a hypothesis that my MIU KPIs is going to be dictated by three initiatives. There is user onboarding and engagement, enhancing the content, so content management related project. And then there is something I need to go ahead with uh, marketing. So there is a social and community engagement. So I'm going to drive three different programs, thinking that this is going to help me to drive the MAUs. Right? So number one, OKRs is going, as I mentioned, it is going to connect all these things together. So definitely that will help me to bring in that visibility, first of all. At any level, at any point of time, if I want to understand my overall company's business performance and uh, my, even it could be like program management. Literally, OKR is one such framework that holds all these things together, but not only that, right? Let's say that I also have to think about like, okay, I'm talking about uh, bringing in any kind of a loyalty program. Probably that might bring in more number of users because of the loyalty program, but I'm going to pay some additional of money out of my pocket to, to launch the loyalty program. Obviously, it is going to get a hit on my average revenue per user. So I also need to understand if any of my initiatives, is it going to have any adverse or indirect impact on my, any of my existing KPIs also, right? And this is where OKRs is going to help us to ensure that we have been doing a fair play in terms of bringing all these things together, right? So the point for us to take on is that, yeah, for sure, the outcome focused thinking is so important for us to begin with the planning. And number two, look at the way how OKR is, a, is kind of acting as a binding mechanism to not only link your outcomes, KPIs, North Star metrics, but also it brings in the different aspects, the initiatives that helps or impacts your KPIs. So bringing in and end-to-end -end visibility of what is happening across the entire organization. In a, in a realistic scenario, you might be seeing this picture kind of nested across multiple layers, and that's where using a platform like Profit helps you to visualize all these things in a much better way, kind of helping you to drive your planning and execution much better. All right, so with that, we covered the importance we, we talked about the reason, we talked about the benefits of bringing in OKRs as part of the annual planning. Now it's time to understand how do we really need to consider this. So we said like, okay, bring in OKRs or even craft OKRs as part of your, as part of your 2024 planning, but how it is going to get played out. That's what we are going to talk about in the next few slides. Right, so, I would say like it's going to be a four different perspectives. It starts with something called as a strategic alignment. Think of a situation, either you should be doing your planning at the company level or at the department level or at the team level or whatsoever levels that you have to do on for your OPS for that year. You just need to think on four different dimensions, right? Look out your company strategic vision and mission. Are you, whether your objectives are aligning with what is that your company wants to focus on in the short term, the near short term, long term, mid term, whatsoever it is, right? And accordingly, you might be able to crack down into a tactical and core strategies and put down the respective time frame and see that what, what is that you want to achieve. Number two, you also need to consider as part of strategic alignment, depending upon your roles and responsibilities. For example, you might be someone who would be handling with M&As, right, mergers and acquisitions. Then in that case, you might have to be constantly doing some market research. You might, you might need to kind of looking out for partners, investors, right, and what is that you really need to acquire to do some acquisitions in the upcoming part of it. So you really need to have an external focus. Same like, right, I mean, if you have been part of finance, obviously, like, your ultimate focus is to ensure that uh, uh, you really need to keep your investors happy. And how do I make my investors happy? So my objectives should have to play it out just to ensure that my EBITDA, my cash flow, everything needs to get aligned out as part of my OPS. And then there is a third aspect, whether 
you will be someone within that organization, right? You'll be someone representing the uh, head of product, head of sales, head of marketing, whomsoever it is, but you are part of one of the value stream within the organization. See that, what is that you need to deliver to the other cross-functional organizations, right? So that it is a win-win situation and collectively it is a win for the organization and for yourself. And last but not the least, look for any process optimization. You might be having your very own challenges, of, of pain points in your existing day-to-day -day activities to keep the business up and running. What is that you have to solve? One? So all those things need to get accounted as part of the strategic alignments, right? And pretty sure like this is something like everyone will be doing on. And apart from the, the call out, whatever we are going to do, I'm not going to spend much time on it. Right? So that's the usual way everyone does it. But with OKRs, what is that we are going to bring on to the table? I would start with that KPI effectiveness. We talked about how OKRs is acting as a bridge to connect your KPIs, your outcomes, and the initiatives. So which means that you also need to consider your strategic business KPIs, but ensuring how are you going to bring in an OKR element to your strategic business KPIs that will help you to come up with the much more powerful OKRs as part of your planning. We'll have another example to talk about that segment in detail, but that's the crux of today's session in terms of making your 2024 OKR annual planning to be more effective and efficient. The third aspect as part of the planning consideration is about the goals alignment. This is nothing but one of the USPs of OKRs, I would say, right? And we all know that, okay, we think about a scenario wherein think of a, a rowing competition. People sit on two opposite directions, right? And ideally, you all need to get aligned and row in a single direction in order to reach the goal faster. And that's what a goal alignment talks about. In a thousand plus organization, definitely it is not possible to see that, okay, what is that everyone has been doing? And more importantly, is it adding value to the organization's strategic goals or not? But that is what OKR is going to do for you. It ensures that at the top level, okay, these are my strategic goals, gets cascaded to the next subsequent levels. And OKR as a framework is going to tie everything together, validates and ensures that each and everything that rest of the organization do that that is going to or planning to do is going to sum up or contributing to the overall top level strategy goals are it. right that's the beauty of OKRs and that's the USB of OKRs and that's one of the primary reasons organizations go for OKRs I would say ensuring that there is no organizational waste everything that we do gets accounted as part of value addition to the organization. Right. So, and then the fourth part, we can do whatsoever different things, fancy things, we call it different terminologies, but nothing is going to move on until otherwise I get a support from my employees. So employee engagement is going to be the prime factor in terms of consideration. So how are we going to make that happen? Until otherwise you make your people to realize that the value that they are delivering, the value that their work is contributing to the overall goals, the moment, and then until the moment they realize that even a single, probably like you have someone in the engineering organization and someone doesn't in API creation, or you have someone in, the, in, a, in a marketing team, they just do some kind of a, a marketing research, trying to get onto some MQLs. Whatsoever tiny little, little things, once you're able to connect that, how every each and every single effort is going to get contributed how are they kind of contributing to the overall company's success and also showcasing that how that each and every contribution is getting rewarded as part of okrs then this is going to be an easy flight you're going to get a complete engagement the change management resistance to change everything is going to get addressed immediately and i would say that while this is not an OKR specific topic, I would say this is a more of a change management specific topic, right? What's a new change that you need to bring in? Ideally, even without having an employee engagement, everything will go for a toss. So ensuring that how OKRs can help to drive the employees to be so engaged. That's another fourth important aspect that we need to talk about, all right? So these are the four planning 
dimensions i would say that you need to take on so point number 1 we talked about strategic alignment this is all pretty much all the organizations is doing currently so i'm not going to go detailed on to it kpi effectiveness we'll talk about it with the with the use case shortly uh three and four with goals alignment and employee engagement we'll be having a, a separate uh, a detailed webinar to talk about these two topics right so with that we'll step on to the kpi effectiveness part of it so we talked a lot of lot of things on outcomes we connected outcomes with the actions we connect we talked about outcomes is nothing but your kpis and north star metric and how okrs is going to act as a bridge to connect all these things different together and then we also talked about the four different dimensions that you need to consider as part of your uh, or 2024 okr planning consideration and how okr is going to play play a role in them right so with that we we get into this, the the second topic as we talked about in the strategic planning considerations as about kpi effectiveness and it's time to bring in another poll at this moment as we step into another important topic in terms of okrs and kpis because i, I know that okay if you're new to okrs you are pretty much everyone is know about like what are kpis right but then i also saw that okay some of you are indicated that you are new to okrs and you curious probably you might be thinking that both are same or both are different you might be having different views on what is an kpi and what it has to do with okrs so let's look at it so there are you'll be seeing four different options of indicating both kpis and okrs are same or probably it is different in the way how they are defined uh the third option being okr is going to add the purpose for kpis and make it more meaningful and uh, the last one kpi leads to the plan of action let's see like okay how or what majority has to say about it all right great i see that okay people kind of wanting to, so good thing is that okay there is no one kind of trying to say that both of them are same so that's a good sign at least you know there is something different between these two i see a, a pretty good amount of uh, distribution of uh, responses between kpi leading to plan of action and okr adding the purpose of kpis and then get more meaning so before i talk about these options let me talk to you about uh, Uh, an example which will help us to understand the difference and helping most precisely helping us to understand what is the impact of uh, kpis on okrs or impact of okrs on kpis the fundamental thing right so what is a kpi i know everyone knows that okay it is a metric which is used to measure the performance of your business measure the performance of any kind of an operations that you would be doing on right so that's as simple as that as a kpi is so you substitute that metric with your north star metric or outcomes or even output also to some extent and you talk when if you are something representing sales you talk about revenue profitability ebitda that becomes a kpi over there if you have been representing right let's say like a, as part of a procurement team then obviously you really need to talk about your lead time your cost efficiency so accordingly right depending upon the levels depending upon the rnr that you be having on everyone will be having their own set of kpis and that's why i precisely said kpis are permanent right even if i have to rate between these two i will always say is that okay kpis are going to be the permanent one it's going to reside forever for the for the business but let's see that okay man what's the difference right or how it is going to play a role in the okr or most importantly how and okr can make an kpi to be more powerful and more meaningful so visualize that okay you look at a kpi dashboard this is all you are going to see right you know like okay i am tracking my revenue i understand i have cracked up up to 40 million at the moment now that's all it talks about as part of a kpi dashboard but the moment when you bring in okr as an element to your kpi right so with an okr i know like what's my goal which is nothing but my objective so let's take an an example that my objective is to double the sales right 
So I'm, I'm going to fuel in the business so that the sales get developed by end of the year. So that's my objective. So with the objective, my vision has been set. My strategy period, I know, right? Whether it is a long-term strategy, a mid-term strategy, or a short-term strategy. And am I talking about a core or a tactical strategy? And what's the planning horizon that you need to consider for? And most importantly, I know like, okay, this is my performance at the moment, but where should I be running towards? What's my target that I should be focusing on? Precisely, that's the very first answer that an OKR is going to provide for us. Indicating that, okay, if my objective is to develop the sales, then my target is going to say that I need to achieve 80 million. If I'm going to say that I need to reach a three, three digit revenue mark, then I know that I need to do a minimum of 100 million. So I, I get a vision by means of bringing an OKR first. So I know this is my, this is what I do at the moment. This is my current performance, but where, where I should be channeling my effort towards, what is my end goal that I should be running towards? That is all going to get defined as part of the target, which is going to get dictated, number one, by OKS, right? Number two, the planning horizon. When am I supposed to achieve this? I just cannot take on ever like all these things, right? OKR also comes up with a time frame. As I mentioned, depending upon your tactical strategy or a core strategy, it tells what's the timeline for you. And precisely in this case, we've been talking about an annual goal, saying that this is my end of annual target. Number three, it also brings you an accountability element. Who is supposed to be responsible to do that? The accountable person. So in this case, talking about the revenue, it's going to be sales. And precisely with this metric, as we bring in an OKR element with those top three dimensions of OKR, you're going to get the plan of outcome, indicating that my first key result, precisely, we also call that as a lagging indicator, telling that what's my plan of outcome. My outcome is to achieve 80 million revenue or sales by end of this year, right? So my plan of outcome is achieved by means of talking about bringing in OKRs, just, you know, I haven't even thought about bringing in other aspects, right? Why we talked about strategic alignment, goal alignment, employee engagement, right? I haven't even brought in all those elements in. I have simply looked at one simple KPI and brought in an OKR dimension to it that helped me to come up with a plan of outcome first, but the most important aspect, the plan of action. So outcomes do not get achieved by itself. So OKRs, as I mentioned, it is also going to bridge that gap as well, bringing in what are we going to do? So the how aspect in terms of how we're going to achieve this one. So that's going to be substituted by a bunch of, of initiatives, or we call that as a lead indicator key results. Indicating like, so in this case, I'm talking about my market expansion. I'm talking about product expansion. I'm talking about partnerships. These are the three strategic initiatives I'm going to take as part of plan of action, right? So if you look at it, all we have done is that you all know that, okay, you look at KPI dashboard, you have multiple KPIs that you'll be tracking on. We picked up one KPI out of that dashboard and we added an OKR element to it. We looked at what is that OKR telling us to do. We looked at the objective, which is the short-term goal or a long-term goal, depending upon the planning horizon. And then for which we added the dimensions of OKRs. Number one, it helped us to come up with a plan of action. And number two, it helped us to come up with a plan of outcomes. Ultimately, everything collectively planned together. So this one single KPI is going to get replanned by means of this OKR set in a simplistic fashion, right? This is the at most reason why really have to do or consider bringing in KPI right, OKRs into your planning. So while OKRs can be that powerful by just impacting your KPIs, right? Think about the other aspects. You've been talking about strategic alignment, goal alignment, employee engagement. The moment when you bring in OKRs to those aspects as well, definitely you're gonna have a much powerful, effective plan for you, right? So that's the thing that you need to consider, right? So this is, while well, there are multiple things, but this is one of the, 
um, uh, crucial things that you need to consider uh, to make this happen, right? Obviously, right? Then uh, uh, when we talk about some of the different considerations, but how do we need to get it into action? How do you really need to put it into execution? I mean, how are you going to make your OKR planning action into life? So really need to have multiple considerations, right? So number one, we talked about preparedness. I just cannot walk in empty handed. I really need to do some groundwork research. Remember, we talked about strategic alignment. We talked about the vision, values, mission, SWOT insights, all those things you do as part of preparedness. Number two, you just simply cannot bring in an OKR element without knowing what an OKR is, without knowing what an outcome-focused thinking approach is. You literally need to spend some time in terms of bringing in some expertise as part of OKR awareness. Right? Number three, you also need to know how are you going to do this out. Normally, annual operating plan, people kind of co-locate and then kind of do it as a, as a, as a one-day, two-day event. But if in case you go ahead, you plan to go ahead with this, what is that your planning roster going to look like? Do you have a plan that talks about this is the way you are going to drive your OKR planning event? At Profit, this is what this is our bread and butter. This is what we do day in, day out. So we also have a, a sample recommendation that tells that how a typical OKR planning event should look like. It emphasizes on all the different aspects that I talked about. Now also putting focus on planning at the company level, at the department level, and also account for cross-functional departments, looking out for risk mitigation and dependency plan, problem solving, right? So those are multiple aspects that gets covered as part of the, that should be part of your OKR planning roster, right? So definitely someone has to anchor it and see that how are you going to drive it? And this is where you also need to decide who or how you will be doing it. Do you have the capability in house or do you need to look out for any external OKR consultant? And lastly, the kind of housekeeping and logistics that you need to take care for yourself, that's something that you have to take up, right? So this is kind of a, a preliminary steps just to ensure that how do you get prepared? So you have the thought process in terms of how do you, what are the different things that you need to look forward as part of considering OKRs as part of your OKR uh, annual planning event. And this one talks about literally how do you have to drive your OKR planning events, right? A practical approach. It's, it's a proven methodology which we have executed for many of your customers, many of our customers. All right. Lastly, let's move on to the uh, reason. Like just to summarize it, when while we've been talking about all these things, the reason is that without OKRs, there is always a problem that we want to miss out that uh, connection between strategy and execution or the connection between plan of action and outcome. And that's the reason like we've been using OKRs substituted with the uh, supporting facts from Gartner and HPR. Right? Last on the list, when I talk about leveraging the expertise. So at this moment, we all know that it's not just about doing a planning activity as in. It comes up with some kind of uh, an OKR expertise as well. Right? And that's where we also talk about the kind of help that at profit what we can do. So we have different ways to impart this OKR expertise to the end group, right? Depending upon the roles, we have a curated programs. So if you are an end user, so there is a program for you at the associate level. If you're a leader, there is a professional program. If you're a program manager or a HR, or who is the one who, or the executive sponsor who is going to drive the OKR program, then we have the OKR uh, uh, program for champions. And then if you are someone who has been part of the product or engineering organization, definitely we do not want to derail the product and engineering with another framework called OPR because they are already invested in agile, scrum, safe, Kanban, whatsoever it is. So just like the way how we see that KPI is going to be so effective in terms of driving the uh, KPIs, right? At the same time, you also want to showcase how OKR is going to be so effective by means of driving the agile also. Right? So there is a separate program for them in terms of how to do that at the product and engineering level. So this is from an, an OKR expertise perspective. And sometimes like you would be falling short of people to execute things for you. And that's where we also provide the kind of end-to-end -end donkey solution. And literally, this is where we come in, we sit along with you, we do the assets analysis, understand your current goals, define the target operating model, define the business blueprinting, 
and sit along with you through your entire uh, uh, implementation. And obviously, the very first part, obviously, it's going to come up in terms of kind of a strategy to OKR map. Right? So that's something we also do as part of. So those are the ways kind of getting in quick value and insights to get some uh, 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 real insights at the, at the quickest point. All right, so with that, we come to the last segment. We are gonna look at uh, the questions that we might be having on, but before we get on to the questions, uh, I would also bring in the last set of a poll for us to, to end this. Uh, so, all right, so we talked about the way how OKRs is going to be so effective in terms of your annual planning. And uh, we talked about four different aspects that you need to consider. Strategic alignment, which is what everyone does. Number two, we spend a good amount of time on KPA effectiveness. Three and four, goals alignment and employee engagement. That's going to be a separate webinar topics. And then we also talked about how do we do it practically with a, with a kind of a OKR planning roster. And then some kind of uh, accelerators in terms of OKR expertise and uh, 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 consulting the uh, engagements. Right. So let's uh, take the last 10 minutes to look at uh, if we have any uh, specific Q&A. Uh, or, or open up the forum for the audience to ask for any questions. All right, how do we ensure that our OKR program is on track? That's a pretty good one because I would say that uh, this is a normal pitfall for any organization. Once you're through with that outcome-focused thinking approach, the literal problem that any organization uh, face is that, uh, am I going on track or not with my OKR implementation? So there are various ways we do that, but most importantly, we all, most importantly, we recommend OKRs for OKR program. So there is a four-stage set of, again, there is a four-stage set of OKRs. It starts at the uh, training level, then it goes down to the OKR planning, OKR execution, OKR engagement. So we literally recommend, like, while you use OKRs to guardrail your strategies, then why can't you use OKRs to drive your OKR program itself? So we have a bunch of, uh, of OKRs that are recommended to track across every phase of the OKR uh, program. That will ensure that it, will, it is on track. But a short answer to that question is that, if you look at the check-in rate, right? I mean, if you have been following 4DX, then obviously you don't talk, you don't know about uh, XPS or an executive or execution performance score. It's something similar to it. So it understands what's the health of your OKR program. In other words, check-in rate is something similar to a heartbeat of an OKR program. And that's a metric that we need to track on just to ensure that if the program stays on, OKR program stays on track. Right? Uh, so there's a question wherein uh, asking about like, how can we take advantage of profit platform on an organization who has been using Persian country for several years? Uh, so this is something where we said that, right? I mean, when so I said, right? Obviously, I, while I'm talking on behalf of OKRs, but it's all aligned with the strategies. And while you would be using Persian country, BSC, 4DX, or whatsoever different strategies, obviously, if you remember the, the things that we talked about over here. This is where we kind of bring in our expertise because we have been seeing this kind of a, a, a situations with many of our customers. Probably like they will be using on different frameworks and they've been trying to bring on to OPS. So they do not want to lose any of the information what they'll be having on. At the same time, they want to ensure there is a smooth transition that happens from the existing framework to the new strategic framework. So precisely that's the way we're gonna do. So we have a, uh, an accelerator, which also talks about how the seven different perspectives of Hoshin country gets mapped onto the OPS. So all the measures, metrics, dimensions within the Hoshin country matrix, everything will get mapped out as part of how are we going to transition. So we want to take up from ground zero, right? If you've been thinking it as a, as a greenfield project, 
mean, we can scratch that out and we can help you in terms of building strategies directly on OKR framework directly. But if you want to take it as a, a brownfield project wherein we need to source the existing strategies from the housing country. So we have that uh, uh, strategy mapping framework that maps those seven different matrix elements from housing country to OKR. That will help us to convert the existing strategies that are aligned with OKS. So that's the way we will be able to handle that. Problem. And then again, like uh, uh, when we have like, uh, uh, we can showcase probably like, uh, if you're interested, probably we can follow it up with the related materials that will help you to understand how we have cracked out, cracked out this problem for other customers. And we also have some interesting uh, blog materials on this. Hope that answers. Right. Um, how can we use the OKRs for manufacturing industry? So that's the other other question. Uh, so the simple question, like when, when I, I I I treat this question something as a similar one. People ask that, okay, man. I saw that people say that, okay, I read the book by uh, a book on measure what matters, right? Andy Grove, uh, uh, where Andy Grove was projected as the forefather of uh, OKRs, right? And then people say that, okay, uh, uh, but that's so focused on technology industry, but I belong to manufacturing or I belong to retail or oil and gas. Can I use it? The simple answer is that wherever there is a strategy and there is the place where we can use the OKRs. So, which means that, and right, even for a non-profit organization, there even, even though they are not focused on profit, Obviously, there is a strategy for them to grow on. So you can use OKRs for them. And uh, if you look at our clientele, our logos also showcase a bunch of uh, uh, clients from nonprofit organizations, a bunch of organizations, even from government organizations and agencies. So precisely, how do we tailor it for manufacturing industry? So what we do is that, right? So initially, when we do that uh, uh, OKR workshop with those leaders, we try to understand. So we, we pick up the strategy, the vision and mission of any organization as the initial uh, to-go element and try to crack down how we can break down that strategy into multiple bunch of long-term OKRs and short-term OKRs depending upon the planning horizon. And how are we going to make that uh, uh, OKRs to be powerful? And that's where like so within our team, like I mean, our consultants can also come from different uh, industry as well. So uh, the, the consulting pe uh, 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 people from manufacturing domain, they also come up with the standard set of OKRs that needs to be tracked if in case of a manufacturing industry. For example, we talk about uh, uh, production optimization, right? So that's something that we need to take on. We really need to talk about objects. Uh, we really need to talk about the lead times. We really need to talk about the safety stocks. So all those things, we factor in and see that depending upon the different uh, organization that gets, or different department that gets involved, we come up with the curated OKRs that aligns with those departments. And then the one-on-one -on -one sessions or the, the OKR workshop that we do with this manufacturing stakeholders, that will help us to curate and contextualize the respective OKRs for the industry. All right. So we might take on last two questions. Uh, Typically, how long it takes to complete the OKR planning process? Uh, on an average, we say that it has to be done within like two weeks. Uh, that's basis upon like you have a, a kind of like five level tired organization because you need to do with the corporate level planning that goes on to the PU or the departments of department. So it, it kind of gets cascaded down. So obviously the first two top level plannings is recommended to happen in a co-located uh, fashion so that uh, we complete the planning in a, in a matter of one or two days. And then you allow the rest of the two weeks to get that, the rest of the planning uh, completed. Uh, ultimately, uh, the best practice says that if your quarter starts on, so the very first week of the quarter beginning, or if you're going with the annual OPS, the very first week of the annual, that's the timeline that you need to complete your OPS. So average timeline it takes is two to three weeks. And depending upon, like probably if people say is that for annual planning, they need to also need to depend on uh, financial planning or budget planning, then you need to account for your, any kind of internal constraints accordingly. But two weeks and precisely completing your planning on the first week of that uh, period is the must and the recommended practice. 
so let's take the last one. Uh, how can we connect the strategy and OKRs? Uh, so this is the mechanism wherein as I mean, it's something similar to what we talked about as part of uh, connecting Persian country to OKRs. So there is a strategy to OKR mapping uh, framework that we follow. And the uh, uh, second thing, so with strategy, it talks about multiple focus elements. It tells that, okay, if you took out any strategy, right, you have a, let's say like you have three or three or five different strategies. It talks about multiple focus areas. So depending upon the best practices of OKRs, right? So it tells that the objective has to be timeline. Objective has to be focusing on one goal. So there are a bunch of best practices of OKRs that tells that how you need to craft OKRs. Three to five objectives at, at every level, three to five key results at, for every objective, right? So we account for those best practices of OKRs, depending upon the, the, uh, the connection with the strategy, and see that how we can break down those long-term strategies into multiple uh, annual OKRs and quarterly OKRs, depending upon the, the, the TAC core or tactical strategies, and then substantiate uh, with the respective key results for them. Right? So that's how we are going to make that happen. And again, like uh, this is more of a, I, mean, I would say this is more of a, a repeated exercise. So there is a framework because this is what the starting point for every organization. Everywhere there is a strategy and people see that, okay, how am I going to connect with the OKRs? Uh, but there is a, a, frame, a, a, a framework that maps between these two. Organizations. All right. So with that, uh, we are on time. Um, go to you, Sasta. Sure, Netaji. Uh, well, that was an amazing session, Netaji. Thank you for giving us such wonderful insights on OKR and planning. Uh, that was amazing. We are out of time. So the questions which we were not able to answer here, we'll definitely get back to you over mail. You can write the question at event at the rate profit .co, and we'll definitely get back in touch with each one of you. I appreciate you all who have stayed with us till the end. Thanks, everyone, and have a nice day ahead. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye.